What's going on Guardians? Briar Rabbit here. Welcome to Shard It or Keep It, the series where I make an argument both for and against dismantling an item, and you make the decision. This week we'll be making the big decision for the exotic sidearm, Dreg's Promise. But first, let's take a look at last week's episode, The Lord of Wolves. The Lord of Wolves is an exotic shotgun earned by completing the Elder Cipher Bounty. Like the other weapons earned in this manner, it is very unique. A solar damage shotgun, it operates and feels like no other shotgun in the game. Instead of firing one lethal burst of several pellets at once, it fires a five round pulse that feels similar to a pulse rifle. Reasons for dismantling this weapon included, it's not that good in PvP. It needs five shots to kill in the crucible, while other shotguns need one. It does have slightly better range than other shotties, but its poor stability and the fact that its bullets have travel time means accuracy is hard to achieve. It just feels less reliable. Devil's Touch, its exotic perk, just isn't that useful in PvP either. It requires teammates to be very close, which makes you a very attractive target for enemy supers. In PvE, the Devil's Touch seems a little underwhelming as well. Anytime your fire team splits up, the perk goes unused. It just needs a wider area of effect. Also, when compared to fast firing shotguns like the 4th Horseman or Dry Rot 32, I feel like I'm giving up some damage potential. The more standard shotguns just do more damage faster and don't have bullet travel time. Arguments for keeping the Lord of Wolves? It holds a ton of ammo, and because of this, it can take down heavily shielded enemies very quickly. And it can do that at a farther range than most other shotguns. With a weapon like the Dry Rot, I run up to an enemy, unload on him, and run before his melee can kill me. With the range advantage of the Lord of Wolves, I can hang out outside of his melee range, dumping ammo into him very quickly and just watch him fall. The Lord of Wolves is earned in the Prison of Elders, and I think that's where its exotic perk, Devil's Touch, shines. In so many of the PoE encounters, your fire team is close together, fighting off waves of enemies to stay alive. With Devil's Touch, it's a bit easier, because they are regenning health faster. Combine this with a Titan who has Ward of Dawn, and you're going to be the most popular guardian in the Reef. It just makes your fire team better. I really love using this gun in Prison of Elders. Once the arguments were made, I left the decision up to you. And as usual, the comments were passionate and entertaining. Thorn Beacock says, keep it. The damage alone makes it worth keeping, but the fact that there is no other gun like it in the game is just gravy on top. It can two shot most shielded red health enemies, even though it has solar damage. It is also incredibly fun to use. Jay Quantstrom says, Shard it, only useful in Prison of Elders, and Prison is useless after a while. And Showtime Kick 123 says, I've got it. Episode 24, Lord of Wolves has 12 letters. 24 plus 12 equals 36. Now, Lord of Wolves can have 39 bullets extended clip. 39 minus 36 equals 3. How many sides does the triangle have? Three sides. Lord of Wolves is Illuminati. Keep it. In the end, with 64 votes for Sharda and 667 votes for Keep It, the Lord of Wolves keeps its place in the vault. Dreg's Promise is an exotic sidearm earned by completing an Elder Cipher bounty. An arc damage weapon, the Promise fires in bursts similar to a pulse rifle. Perks on this weapon include reserve ammo. This weapon always has ammo on respawn. Grave robber, melee kills with this weapon equipped have a chance to immediately refill the magazine. And shock rounds, high ricochet shock rounds with enhanced target acquisition. Stats on the Dreg's Promise include a maxed out fire rate, low impact, good range, low stability, decent reload speed, and very low aim assist and equip speed numbers. Okay, so it's an exotic. It's one of only two sidearms currently available in the game, and it looks utterly unique. Why would we dismantle it? Let's start off with PvP. This gun is utterly garbage. Part of the problem is that this gun is not a hit scan weapon in Destiny. Hit scan means that when you pull the trigger, your bullet instantly hits where the crosshairs are. 
Drake's Promise uses a ballistic model, meaning your bullets have a bit of travel time. Combine this with quick moving targets, the lag that is inherent in online multiplayer shooters, and this gun's low aim assist stats, and you have what ends up feeling like a gun that is constantly robbing you. Let me be clear, many times when firing at a nearly stationary target, I feel like this gun just wasn't connecting. And that sucks. Part of this is skill. When firing ballistic weapons, you need to lead the target or fire at where they will be instead of where they are. Because there are relatively few of these types of weapons in Destiny, this is not a skill that we're used to using. But skill doesn't explain it all. If a target is stationary or moving directly toward me, bullets that seemed on target were not registering damage. My guess is that this is a bad combination of poor aim assist and lag, but it really is hard to test for and I don't want to play with this gun in the Crucible any longer than I have to, so suffice it to say, don't use this gun in the Crucible. That brings us to PvE. Things are not nearly so bad in PvE, but it's still not exactly a gem. The main issue is the perks. Reserve ammo gives more ammo on respawn, great if you have to use it, which is hopefully very infrequently. In PvE, I much prefer a perk that helps me stay alive and kill faster, not one that rewards death. In shock rounds, just feels like a missed opportunity. If you fire at a surface, the projectiles will bounce off and have a high degree of magnetization toward a target. How is this perk useful? I don't know. It's kind of fun to mess around with, but it's not very practical. What it should have been was tracking rounds similar to what the Fallen shoot at us, instantly upping the coolness factor of this gun way, way up. But that's not what it is. I think the real problem, though, is the Vestian Dynasty. There are only two sidearms currently available in Destiny, the Dreg's Promise and the Dynasty. And frankly, the Dynasty is just better, and it's legendary, which frees up your exotic slot for another weapon. That makes it very hard to spend your exotic weapon slot on this gun. Okay, let's get positive here. Why would we keep this gun around? Well, it's cool looking, like a mustachioed potato with spikes, nothing else looks quite like it and it's only one of two currently available sidearms and the only one that's exotic. And it's pulse fire. So if you like the look and feel of this weapon, there simply are no alternatives. It can also be fun to fool around with and even useful in very specific situations. For instance, it lowers Hive Knight shields immediately. When a knight brings up a shield, pop it with the promise and go right along your merry way killing that knight. And with its combination of Field Scout and Grave Robber, it always seems to have ammo. And that ammo works against PvE enemies. It actually connects here and makes it possible to burn down enemies relatively quickly. So it's a cool looking gun that sucks in PvP, but can be fun to mess around with in PvE. But is that enough to keep it around? That's up to you. In the comments below, cast your vote. Shard it or keep it. And in the next episode, I will act upon your recommendation. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you liked the video. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you guys next time.